There's a sudden accident. Your dog's not moving, they're not breathing, their heart may not be beating. Do you know how to do CPR? Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, we're gonna be discussing CPR, and in particular, I'm gonna be showing you some of the new CPR guidelines for our dogs. So the first step in CPR is assessing responsiveness. Is your dog breathing? Um, is, does he or she have a heartbeat? So we can assess if Pippi is breathing or not, you know, especially if she's lying on her side, unconscious, not moving, you know, just by putting your hand in front of her nose, do you feel any air moving in or out? Put your hand on her chest. Do you feel her chest rising in and out or not? And just even putting your, your face right to the edge of your nose, do you feel air moving in or out? The next thing is checking for a heartbeat. So the easiest way to check for the heartbeat would be to just put your hand up in behind your dog's left armpit here. The heart is easiest somewhere, typically located between the third to fourth to fifth rib spaces. So up in here behind the left arm, right in here, the left armpit. And right now in a healthy dog like Pippi, you can feel this strong heartbeat. Secondly, you can then just put your ear right over top of your dog's chest in the same area. If you can't feel anything, put your ear. Do you hear the heart beating? It's a good idea just to do this now when you've got a normal healthy dog, a normal healthy cat. Once again, just so you can check yourself, you know, where is my dog or cat's heart located? How can I normally feel it? As well too, go ahead and check their breathing. You know, what is normal? So you know what normal is? Then you can recognize abnormal. The second step in CPR is obtaining a patent airway. So if your dog is lying there non-responsive, the first thing you'd want to do um, is pull the tongue out of your dog's mouth. So grabbing your tongue and pull it out of the mouth. Secondly, you want to make sure the head is in line uh, with the rest of the spine. We've got a straight head and neck. <laughs> Baby. You're going to close your dog's muzzle, put your mouth straight over top of their nose, and then perform two rescue breaths. Looking to see if air is moving into the lungs, you're going to want to feel your hand or actually see the chest rise to know if, the lung, if there isn't an obstruction and the airway is intact. If there is an obstruction, then you, then you need to perform the Heimlich, which we did in the earlier video. The basic summary of that is you're putting force on the upper stomach um, to try to put additional pressure on the diaphragm and expel that mass. Step three is performing rescue breathing. So once you've got the airway open, then what you're doing is you're doing those two mouth to nose respirations, um, getting two respirations in, into your dog's lungs. <laughs> Step four is circulation. So the first thing you've done is, is gently laid your dog on his or her right side. We've located the heart, easiest to found here, up in behind the left armpit. So this is up in behind, just up above your dog's left elbow on their front left leg. You can feel it beating quite now. Go ahead and feel it now in your own dog. And what I want you to do is put, you know, one hand, put your right hand on top of your left hand. And you're, what you're gonna do, you have to put substantial amount of force onto that chest wall. And we're compressing it quite rapidly. So first of all, the, we wanted to compress it about a half an inch for a small dog, up to an inch and a half for a large dog, about an inch, which is about an inch for a medium sized dog. So I've got my left hand right on top of the heart here, up and behind that left armpit, my right hand on top of it. I might even use my body to push down on it. And I'm trying to do upwards of one, of two compressions a second. So like, boom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I wanna do that for a full 120 compressions and then do two rescue breaths. So the big difference, what's changed is CPR, is there's been much more of a focus on the chest compressions, I'm doing them much more quickly than in the past. I used to suggest only 15 compressions, sort of one a second, then two rescue breaths. Now they want us to do 120 compressions. That's over, what, 60 seconds, over a minute period of time, then the two rescue breaths. So we're doing them much faster, much longer, focusing on the heart, and then going to the rescue breaths. So I'm putting a fair amount of force. I'm not gonna do it because Pippi's fine, but if she wasn't breathing, I would put a substantial amount of force I might even lean right into it. And I'm gonna do that for 120 times over 60 seconds. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, So if you can imagine that re repetition at that speed after 120 compressions, then I'm gonna go to the two rescue breaths, which we did earlier. Then you're gonna to wanna to continue the heart compressions, the rescue breaths, you know, until your dog starts breathing again, their heart starts beating, and or you can get you know, emergency care. Hopefully someone is there to help you. Yeah, you know, they've called an emergency veterinarian. Hopefully maybe you've been able to transfer your dog to get to one. Thank you guys once again for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. I'd love for you to click up there to subscribe, click down there to like this video, and then I'd love for you to click the link further in the box below. When you sign up for my newsletter, I can send you my free books and my free videos on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies.